I really think this is kind of the game that can either make or break Bioware's reputation because unfortunately the the past few games they've put out or at least the past few Mass Effect games they've put out people have not been happy with them and I definitely think this game Anthem is a lot more comparable to Mass Effect than it is to Dragon Age or Knights of the Republic or any of the other Bioware games so I feel like for Bioware there's a lot riding on this game like this is the game that they really need to get right. <laughs> Alright gamers, you are listening to a new episode of What You Gaming On, the video series where we start every episode by asking you, the viewer, the gamer, what are you gaming on? If you want your answer to be featured in an upcoming episode of What You Gaming On, let me know in the comments of this video or on any of my social media the game you've been playing, what you like about it, what you don't like about it, and your answer will be featured in an upcoming episode of what you gaming on? We're going to go ahead and jump into what I've been gaming on, and I have been playing Anthem, the long-awaited new title from Bioware and the unfortunate EA. Uh, we've been waiting for this game for a couple years now, so it's not like, you know, Kingdom Hearts 3, where we've been waiting over a decade for it. It was only announced a few years ago, and it's finally out. Uh, I really think this is kind of the game that can either make or break Bioware's reputation because unfortunately the, the the past few games they've put out or at least the past few Mass Effect games they've put out people have not been happy with them and I definitely think this game Anthem is a lot more comparable to Mass Effect than it is to Dragon Age or Knights of the Republic or any of the other Bioware games so I feel like for Bioware there's a lot riding on this game like this is the game that they really need to get right it's also a very different game from what they normally do whereas most of the other games they do are single player uh, RPG campaign story experiences where this is an online game where you're going to be playing instead of with characters that make up your your uh, your squad or your team or your uh, your teammates the people that you're going to be playing with are going to be real players your other players your friends random players that you match with whoever <clears throat> So this is definitely slightly a, a slightly different game for Bioware to come out with, and I think however well this game does could, again, make or break Bioware. Uh, hopefully, I, personally, I'm, I'm enjoying the game, so I think Bioware so far has done a good job with this game, but that's my opinion, and it's only the opinion I have after just the first weekend of playing it. So the things I like about Anthem... And I keep thinking about this when I'm playing it is, again, with Bioware, how happy I am that I finally have a new Bioware title to experience. That as much as I love Dragon Age and Mass Effect and Knights of the Old Republic, which I would love a new game of Knights of the Old Republic, but as much as I love their, their big-named series... I am excited to have like the first game of a brand new title, something that we haven't seen before. You know, it's kind of like sinking your teeth into the first Dragon Age or the first Mass Effect game uh, and, you know, learning about this new world and these new characters and how this world works. And I'm excited about that. I'm, I'm excited to see how how this world works, not just with the conflict between the freelancer character and the Dominion, uh, but just how this world works. Like, it's a very mysterious and interesting world that's governed by this quote-unquote anthem of a creation that we're not really sure what it is. And the people in the game aren't really sure what it is. So there's just a lot of mystery to unpack to unpack with it and trying to, un like, that's a big part of a lot of the missions that I've gone on in the game where you're, like, helping people try to figure out, like, WTF is this? And I'm hoping that that's something we learn as the game goes forward, like, story-wise and also aesthetic-wise, just the way the game looks. It, the way the game looks and the way the story is kind of unfolding, and I hope it does kind of go this way. It kind of reminds me of Horizon Zero Dawn. Where, like, there's definitely an understanding of how this society works in this world, but as, you know, a player in modern day 2019, you know, seeing a world like this, you're, I'm, I'm less curious about how the freelancers function as an organization or the Sentinels, how, how the Sentinels work or how cities work or government and more. I'm curious, how did the world get this way? Like in Horizon Zero Dawn, you're... Um, 
um, I don't want to say millions or thousands, but hundreds of years in the future where our society has has been erased. And there's just and the only thing left are these like empty buildings and basically shells of a former society. And as you're and as the story progresses, you start to find out why why that is like what happened to the what happened to the society, what brought us to this very tribal primitive world hunting robot animals like and that's something you discover as you're playing the game. And I'm hoping that that's something that becomes more and more relevant in the story for Anthem is finding out how this world works, finding out why the Anthem of Creation is doing whatever it is it's doing, like how, do, how the world works. That's something I'm hoping, and I have a feeling that's kind of where the story is going, is that we're going to get more and more answers like that outside of just reading the codex entries that you pick up every now and then. Uh, I'm hoping that's what it's going to be, but so far I have. I have really enjoyed the story and the characters, and that's a big thing for Bioware. I mean, one of one of Bioware's biggest things with their games is focus on story and characters, and that's evident in all in all of the all the games I can think of that I've played. Like story and characters are probably the most important thing. So the fact that I am enjoying this story from Anthem, I am enjoying the characters, like that that's a good thing and that's straight up from Bioware. And I've heard some things like like I've heard some things that that the the characters aren't that good, but I have to disagree. Every character whether they're my favorite character or not, every character I've come across has been truly unique from side characters to main characters. Like they've been truly unique. Like I remember who they are and the things that they're talking about because so far none of the characters are just characters that could blend in together. Like they're like all of the all of the main characters or the characters that you meet are very unique characters that have very specific characteristics. And so far my favorite characters have been two uh, like two of the main characters that are on your quote unquote team is Halleck and Faye. Like, Faye is, is without a doubt, my favorite character in this game. Like, and I'm, a, I'm surprised by that because I was really expecting her to be not one-dimensional, but I guess I was expecting her to just be the brainy character. Like, that, and that was it. But no, like, the more you talk to her, you find out about, like, her favorite radio shows and you see her, like, geek out on that. And I love that. Like, that made her a very endearing character. And she quickly became my favorite character in this game. And then Halleck is just a very boisterous and very like he, he doesn't do half measures uh, in how he talks or the things he does like he's never he either really likes you or or he really doesn't uh and he's just he's just a very fun like that that's the thing they're very fun characters and very unique characters that definitely stand out on their own and i think that's a great job from bioware i mean that's i mean and, and it's not that bioware has never done that before they obviously have but i'm glad that they're doing it in anthem because I, at least my worry was that this game was just going to be you know another cash cow for ea and bioware like they did with mass effect andromeda where they're just putting it out to get a big influx of money and then screw over their fans uh, I, I'm glad that the the I feel like the work has gone in to make this a really good game, um, and not just an MMO for a video game company to cash in on that MMO money money gravy train. That it is actually a really good game that I am thoroughly thoroughly enjoying, uh, and that's something that. Uh, and I mean, that is something I worried about with this game, with it being you know the the big MMO online game that it was going to be is that this basically just came out to be the destiny killer or you know the the new game that's going to kill all the other mmo type games which i one i don't think it needs to be personally i think that games don't need to kill other games because if you give them enough time they're going to do it on their own you know look at destiny destiny 2 was definitely a fresh start for destiny that brought a lot of new players in and now I, I I think I've seen that the, the the number of players for it has gone down significantly. The same thing for World of Warcraft. And World of Warcraft is definitely one that kind of dips and rises in their player base and how many, you know, how many people are playing it at a time. But I feel like right now, WoW is definitely in that dip. And it has nothing to do with, you know, Anthem coming out or even Red Dead Redemption or Red Dead Online coming out or anything like that. It's just the nature of the game. It comes and goes with a lot of these games that are supposed to be, you know, online, uh, sustainable games that go outside the main story that's supposed to keep you playing. So I don't think there needs to be a Destiny killer. Destiny killed itself all on its own. 
Uh, but I, I really was worried that Anthem was going to be a very one-dimensional kind of game that's only purpose was to make money and kill off other MMO games like Destiny or World of Warcraft. And I definitely feel like it's not now. You know, I, I really, I, I'm really enjoying it as a game on its own. And it's not just because of the online thing. It's not just because it's Bioware. It's an enjoyable game. And I keep hearing that the end game is where the game really starts and the end game is, you know, is where things really kick off. And I was like, well, if that's the case, then the end game is apparently going to blow my mind because as I've said, I've thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed playing Anthem so far just in the in the main story campaign and just kind of, you know, leveling up. But there have been a few issues. Now, a lot of these issues I'm kind of chalking up to it's the first weekend it's open, it's fully open to the public, you know, games, no matter what, are going to have issues, and I think a lot of them are. One issue I don't think is a first weekend problem, but something that they put in the game that I think they need to take out is kind of this system or this feature where if you're in a squad and one of your and one of your one of the other players goes like way far ahead into towards the objective if you're behind it pulls you it basically like takes you out of the game into a loading screen and then basically teleports you to that player far ahead of everyone else in the in the game which like i can see the benefit of that that it's you know it's not it, it's making sure that players aren't left behind. It's making sure that players don't miss out on something in the main objective. But it's also kind of annoying, especially when you're flying around and someone's ahead of you, but then you see like a collectible on the ground that you want to go grab, but you can't grab it because before you can get to it, you're pulled to the player that's in the front, which uh, like, I think that's something that needs to change or they need to at least increase the duration of it. Like instead of, you know, 20 or 10 or 20 seconds to get to the to get further ahead they give you like 60 seconds like just give me like 60 seconds to you know stop go pick up the thing on the ground and then catch up instead of just you know removing me from what i was doing for after just 10 seconds i think that's something that they definitely need to fix or adjust or take out altogether um like i said i see the merit of it that it definitely wants to make sure that players aren't missing out on content because another player cleared it out so cleared it out real fast or they want to make sure that players don't just fly off and dick around while other players are trying to play the game like it definitely keeps the team together but it needs to be adjusted something something with it needs to be changed or they need to take it out altogether the other issues i've come into really are i just think like kind of like like you know opening weekend issues that are just glitches um like i've had the game crash on me more than once uh and that's been really annoying another super annoying thing is that the safe zone basically the basically how your heads up display your hud is displayed in the game on the court lawn basically on the outlines of your screen like for me and i don't know if there's anyone else but for me the safe zone of it is definitely wider than my tv not that i have a small tv but it's wider than my tv and i have to go into the settings and like manually fix it and the first time I did that, I was like, all right, cool, whatever. Like, that's normal for a lot of games where I have to, like, adjust some of the settings like that. But this is something that I have to do every single time I get into the game. Like, every single time I come into a new game, I have to go and fix it. And that's really annoying, especially if I forget to do it, get into the middle of a fight, and then need my heads-up display, and I can't see it or I can't read it. And it's like, well, God damn it. And I have to finish the fight and go and fix it. Like, that's just a really annoying thing that, again, needs to be fixed. Like, if I set my heads up display and my safe zone at a certain thing, it needs to stay that way. I don't want to have to do this every single time I come into the game. Another issue, like I said, with crashing, and this, uh, this has really only been a big issue once. And it's, but it, it was a big issue. So yes, I've, I've run into a number of situations where my game would crash. Um, usually it, it like, it's usually in like a loading thing or something. It would make me crash. Uh, and I would have to go back into the game, but there was one thing where I was playing it, uh, on Saturday night where I was in a very important story mission. And if you're playing the game, I was basically in, I was in the mission that was the fortress of dawn. Which, if you've played it, you know this is a very, very important 
mission in far as what happens in it and the plot points that come out and what happens after. Well, I did, like, I did the mission. I finished the mission, the playable part of the mission, but then at the last playable part, when you're supposed to go into the cutscene that happens after what you just did, my game crashed. And I was really annoyed that I was like, well, damn it, like, I'm gonna, I, I guess I'm gonna have to go back in and do it again. I started the game up again, and it gave me the option to go back into the mission, which I was like, okay, cool, maybe it'll just take me to where I was. That didn't work, and my game crashed again. So this is the third time I'm doing this now, getting back into the game, and I'm just like, whatever, screw it, I'll just replay the mission, whatever. So I go in, out of the session, to just replay the mission, but instead of giving me the option to replay the mission, it instead shoots me to the cutscene after the cutscene. The cutscene that basically talks about the super important plot points that just happened that I then missed out on. Like, imagine if right here, right now, I told you exactly what was going to be happening in the Game of Thrones series finale, the last episode, and I was just going to tell you all of it. Like, that would really suck. I'm not going to tell you. Not that I know. Uh, I, I don't know what's going to happen in the last series finale or even the last season of Game of Thrones, but if I did, that would really suck. And that's basically what happened, is that I was basically spoiled for the things that just happened. There was no way I could go back and do it. There's no way you can go back and play specific past missions. There is a way that you can go and potentially play past missions in just like the quick play mission thing whenever you start a new game or when you start into the game and get into the whatever mission you want to go in like you could potentially go back and replay missions but it's not anything you can choose like i can't choose to go back and play the fortress of dawn i would just have to i guess randomly at some point when i'm playing all of these missions get thrown in um, which is something i think they need to change is like let us go back and replay missions that we choose to replay um, but there was no way I could like in the game, go back and see what happens. I basically had to pull up YouTube, find a playthrough of it and see what happens, which really sucked, which I mean, at this point, like whatever it happened, I found out what happened. I found out what I missed and I'm, I'm caught up, but just at the time it was, ah, uh, it was just really, really frustrating. So that's something that definitely needs to be fixed is like the game crashing, Either the game crashing or the game getting stuck in this never-ending loading screen. Like, that's something that needs to be fixed, Bioware. Bioware, EA, if you're listening to me, you know, you, you need to go and fix those things. Um, because it, it definitely made it definitely made playing the game a little more sour for me. I was like, ugh, now I really don't want to be playing this, but I do really want to be playing it because aside from the issues I've said, I'm thoroughly enjoying the game. So... Yes, like, it definitely has its issues, and it's definitely, I mean, again, it's, this is the first public weekend that it's open, so it's not like, you know, it's, it's already failed or anything, and it's definitely a game that's going to be, you know, tweaked and fixed and added to as time goes on, as, as MMOs do, um, so I think, so I'm excited to see what's going to come from Anthem, I'm excited to see more of the story of this, of this game, I'm more, I'm excited to see what's going to happen in the end game and like how it's going to continue. Like if there's going to be some, I guess not DLCs, but expansions added to it or some new missions or new javelins or anything that's going to be added to it. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Like I am, I am, I'm really enjoying this game. So hopefully, hopefully this game holds up, you know, it, it's definitely the first weekend, but you know, in a month or two months from now, hopefully we'll still be playing this game. I'll still be playing this game and still enjoying it. And it won't just kind of phase out real quick or fail real quick. Like, hopefully this is a game that sticks around. Um, now that Anthem is out, I'm kind of hoping, and I've, I've said this about Kingdom Hearts with Square Enix, that now that Kingdom Hearts 3 is out from Square Enix, maybe you can start getting some more updates on a Final Fantasy VII remake um, that is happening, but we haven't heard anything in a while. So hopefully that'll change for Square Enix, and hopefully for Bioware... You know, that's something that we can start looking forward to now that Anthem is out. Now that Anthem, which was, you know, for a while the big game they're working on, now that it's out, hopefully we'll start seeing some updates on a new Dragon Age. They, I think a month ago, they did like a teaser about the Dread Wolf Lives or something that basically alluded to Solus and what was going to happen in Dragon Age 4. 
Um, so hopefully that'll be like the next thing they're going to work on is a new Dragon Age. And now that Anthem's out, we'll start seeing some trailers and updates and details about that. And of course, it was also recently, uh, it was also recently restated. Casey Hudson recently restated that Mass Effect is not dead, that they're going to be making another Mass Effect, that, you know, they are going to continue the series, maybe not right this moment, but it is in the docket to to make a new Mass Effect game. Uh, so hopefully we can start seeing more stuff about that. Like, you know, I, 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 as much as I'm enjoying Anthem, I am looking forward to other games coming out of Bioware like Dragon Age or Mass Effect. So hopefully now that Anthem's out, that's something we'll start to see. But that is what I have to say about Anthem. I will be putting out a more comprehensive written review of uh, Anthem uh, on my website in about a week. So keep, an, keep a lookout for that. And I would love to hear from you what you think of Anthem and other Bioware games. Like, what, what other games from Bioware do you enjoy? If you're playing Anthem, what do you like about it? What do you not like about it? And remember, if you answer and tell me this, what you like about the game you're playing, what you don't like about the game you're playing, leave it in the comments or on any of my social media, and your answer will be featured in an upcoming episode of What You Gaming On. If you want to read any of my written reviews of video games or Marvel TV shows and movies, go to www.treyguillotine.blogspot.com. If you want to see the rest of my videos, you can get those at youtube.com slash tguillotine. And make sure to subscribe to my channel to geek out some more. Thanks for watching and have fun.